Hi, I'm Adam, a quality improvement practitioner here at ESHT, and I lead on QI learning. So for this part of the Fools e-learning module, I'm going to talk briefly about some of the quality improvement methods and approaches that you can use to try to improve patient falls. So I will share some slides. So something to start by emphasizing is that it's really important to just get going and try to change things. Falls can be a complex issue and sometimes there's an inclination for people to want to get every relevant person together and do a big large scale initiative uh, wanting to really improve things, but don't create barriers for yourself and make things too unwieldy. A key part of quality improvement is making small changes, trying things out and just getting started. So do try to make a start where you've seen things that you can change. And if you want some help, get in touch with uh, me via the email address here. So the structure that we use for delivering quality improvement at ESHT and at most NHS organisations is called the model for improvement. And this is a four stage process where we begin by defining what do we want to achieve and trying to make a specific measurable goal of what level of achievement do we think that we can attain through improvement work? That sounds like something fairly uh, clear and obvious in the sense that we're trying to reduce falls, but as I'll explain it in a moment, that might be a slightly simplistic way of uh, looking at falls improvement. Sometimes you have to define your achievement or your goal in a slightly different way. <coughs> What we also want to do is to aim to have a clear measurement system in place so that we know that the changes that we've made have made a real impact, ideally a patient benefit. The thing that really differentiates quality improvement from other types of change management or project management, for instance, is that we're not starting out with a goal in mind of something that we just want to deliver, a change that we already know is going to be helpful, but we're starting with an open mind about a range of things that might impact the problem that we're trying to address and testing them out one by one on a small scale before we expand or accept them as part of a new practice. And so that's what's called the PDSA cycle, uh, Plan, Do, Study, Act. And that is the process of testing things one by one. So this is the distinction um, of quality improvement from other types of changes. We've got a range of ideas and we try them out and see which are effective. So we've got a little bit of evidence for everything that we actually do differently. <coughs> So in falls improvement, as I mentioned, we are of course trying to reduce the rate of falls, which in, in improvement projects we would usually measure as the rate per thousand bed days. Uh, it's important to do that so that you are accounting for how many patients are in your area. And also this is helpful for comparing um, between areas which may be of different sizes and have different volumes of patients. Whether this can still make it difficult to detect whether you've made an improvement. So I'll give an example here. This is data from a ward. And as you can see, uh, from month to month, there may, might be an average of about four falls and it varies quite a bit. Some months are quite relatively worse than others. There aren't very many falls. The thing that's challenging about measuring improvement in falls is that it's a very multifactorial problem. All sorts of different things might be areas where you could potentially make improvements. You could look at the patient awareness of their own risks, the amount of staff available to supervise patients. You might look at medication reviews and how polypharmacy affects falls and all of the things that we've looked at at the beginning of this e-learning module. So let's say that you selected one of those and you thought we could be doing better at addressing postural hypertension in patients. And so you began implementing best practice and taking lying and standing blood pressure in all of the relevant patients. So you've delivered an intervention and an improvement there and reduced that risk factor. So that's a really positive thing to achieve. However, of course, all of the other risk factors which factor into falls would still be present because you haven't begun to address them yet. What that would mean is that in the short term, when you look at your rate of falls, which is already quite variable and which is under, underpinned by a range of different um, factors, 
it's going to be difficult to detect that the improvement that you've made has affected the rate of falls, which could be a bit demotivating, even frustrating. And so what I would suggest is that when you're looking at falls as an improvement goal, what you do is what's called process measurement. And so you look at the things that you know would be helpful to improve and focus your efforts and your energies on making improvements to those things because falls is a an issue that affects every nhs every healthcare organization so we've already got a lot of research and a lot of understanding about what we should be doing so what can be helpful is to deliver an improvement project to make sure that you do all of those things so for instance in this e-learning we've looked at the importance of putting in place actions to address risks which affect any given patient. So you could record how effectively you've put those actions in place and whether they were carried out. You could take a tally of that. You could also talk to patients and see what, what their understanding of their risk of falls was. Is it accurate? Have they been uh, spoken to about it? You could look at the risk assessments and take some data from them and see if they've got the right level of detail and if they've been filled out accurately. Or if you were implementing something patient facing, like the giving of patient information, keep a tally of whether that's taken place. So these are all the types of things that you could create an ongoing audit of, which would create some data. And then you can tell, are we doing all of these things that we need to do to improve falls effectively? And if not, you can think about improvement ideas of how will you deliver those things effectively. So once you've decided on your goal, and it might be, as I say, quite a focused goal around a process measure, you would begin to generate ideas about things that you could put in place to, to find improvements in, in that area. So I'll give an example here. Um, so what this is is called a process map. And in this instance, we'd mapped out the process of a patient coming into the front door of the hospital and going through a pathway of care through the emergency department and onto whether they're discharged or moved to a ward. And by doing this, we're able to find all of the points in the process where perhaps information is being handed over, assessments are being carried out, opportunities to uh, identify risks and where things might not be working that well, where there are things that we could try out. You can see some of these green tabs for things that have worked in the past and things that don't seem to be working at the moment. So by doing this process of scoping out the problem through a process map, we've generated ideas for things that we can change. There are a number of other methods that you can use. This is just one example, but the key point is that you're finding multiple ideas for improvements um, that are specific to your area of work. An idea that I'd like to draw attention to is a swarm process, which is something that is being tried in some areas at ESHT and is well known to have worked at other organisations. So this is um, all of the staff in an area congregating together after a fall has taken place and working together to generate a shared understanding of what went wrong. And this is really helpful because it means you've got really good quality data rather than following up at a later stage with an investigation. It's a a guilt free environment where everybody can have an open conversation about what went wrong and then uh, that can guide decisions about what to improve in the future. So that's led by health and safety at ESHT. But there are a whole range of different things that you can address around trip hazards, the layout of wards, how that affects where the people are confused. Um, really important to focus on patient factors. Do they understand their risk of falls? Uh, what understanding do they have of it? Are the right checks being carried out? So as I mentioned, highly multifactorial and you might want to choose to work on one area at a time. So a useful way of organising your ideas is what's called a driver diagram. Here was a, an early driver diagram for one of the areas that we worked on falls improvement on a few years ago. And we've organised the different categories of falls improvement areas that have potential um, and that allows us to generate change ideas in each of these areas. So I'll show how that was implemented in a moment and how it would be implemented is in the PDSA cycle. So we're taking the ideas 
that we might have organized on our driver diagram that we've discovered via um, scoping activities and we're going to try to implement them one by one and see if they affect any change. What we might start by doing is thinking about which are the most helpful to to implement straight away. Some of the ideas might be things that are quite simple, like for instance, is there an area of your uh, working area where there are trip hazards? Well, you wouldn't test that and find out if it's a good idea. You just remove the trip hazards. There are some things that are quite straightforward, like putting up posters and patient information leaflets. Those might be quick wins that you do straight away. There might be other things which have got potential. You might decide that you want to reorganize the way that certain people are working or deliver a new type of intervention um, for patients. Um, but you want to test that out and see whether it works and try different versions of it. And that's where PDSA testing comes in. Also, of course, if there's something that's really challenging and you're not sure whether it's going to work, it might not fit within quality improvement because if it's difficult to test um, and implement, then that could be a bigger project that you might want to leave for later. So implement the things that have got potential that you need to test and see if they work. So here's the log of changes from that project. Um, we've got our different categories of our key factors that we were interested in at the top here, and then we've gone on to start implementing them, uh, reviewing every fortnight to see whether or not they were helpful. And some of them were helpful and some of them weren't. And if they were helpful, sometimes we came back a few weeks uh, consecutively and changed things to make sure that we've really got an effective change before moving on to the next test. And that's the, the gist of the PDSA process. And you can see that that would fit onto a what's called a, a run chart or an SPC chart here. The key thing is that we're monitoring the outcome in time series and then keeping a log of when we've changed things and seeing what happened. So that's really just the overview of QI and falls. Um, there's a lot more you can learn about QI and there is more information about falls. Um, there's a falls teams channel uh, on MS Teams, which you can access if you want to request access to that. It's got a lot of documentation from past projects and um, if you require further QI support, please contact me. Mm -hmm.